read the names on this monument, you'll notice that many are in the Japanese section of the Idlewild Cemetery. I am an American because I was born just a few miles from here, and because I believe in democracy, and because I fought an enemy who looked just like me, but who stood against everything I believed in. My name is Frank Hachia. I was born in 1920 and died January 3rd, 1945. I was buried here in 1948. My parents, they moved to this country in the, the first decade of the last century from Japan. And growing up, I would play in the strawberry fields until I was old enough to work in them. Me and our white neighbors, we, we got along just fine. We didn't really notice the differences. It was, wasn't until we went to a public school that we began seeing the, the, the slight differences in us. The, the food we ate, language we spoke at home with our parents, and the differences in appearances. Well, our Aise, our first generation parents, they didn't want us to forget about our Japanese heritage. And so they built a, a Japanese school. Uh, three nights a week, we would all go. Being kids, we didn't always uh, appreciate what our parents were trying to do for us. If you were going to look for me then, you'd find me in one of three places. In the back row, farthest from the teacher, on the floor, crawling around trying to make my friend Man Moji laugh, or uh, outside in a scrape with another kid. Uh, now, when I was 16, my parents, they got news that their uh, father inherited land near Okinawa, Japan. And so we, we tearfully said our goodbyes to our neighbors and friends and moved. It was great until my brother and I started school in Japan. Uh, it was a very sobering experience. We didn't speak Japanese very well. We only spoke it at home in Hood River, after school, after athletics, for a few hours with our parents. After a few weeks, we were completely discouraged. Uh, my, my mom, she hired a tutor to help us with a Japanese lesson, and, and we were ever thankful for his help in this transition point in our life. Sadly, after only one year, he was uh, drafted, and uh, last I heard, he was an uh, infantry captain in China. The first summer in Japan was one of the happiest times in my life. I got to go to the big city in like Kobe, something very different from the humble life we led here in the river. And living in Japan gave me two great uh, benefits to my life. Uh, first was uh, appreciation for my, my country, America. Hmm. This is not to say I didn't like Japan, but I was born here. This was my home. I uh, read once that to truly uh, appreciate your country, you must travel abroad. And I believe this to be true. The second great benefit to my life was my growing understanding of a Japanese culture and language. To truly understand the people and their problems, you have to understand the language. This second was to be the most influential for the rest of my life, and the reason I chose to leave Japan. Uh, after four years, I felt like I was only thinking in Japanese, and my English was faltering. And so when my father said that he would be going back to Oregon, I decided to come with him. Uh, I stayed with the uh, Rodemar family, like surrogate parents here in Hood River. My, my mother, she wrote a letter to Mrs. Rodemar and said to, to scold me as if I was one of her own children. And she did. <laughs> but, but it was only when I deserved it. I wanted to show the Hakujin, uh, the white kids, that the ideals of American democracy, freedom of individual, regardless of race, color, or creed, should work for the uh, Japanese, too. And so I graduated high school and studied political science and American history in the Oregon Institute of Technology and later at Oregon State. And then uh, in came Pearl Harbor. I, I, I enlisted as soon as I could. My mother and brother were still in Japan and I thought the only way to help them was to, to free them from the military powers. The hardest thing for me to see was my father being taken to Tule Lake internment camp. Uh, America, like many countries, has its faults. But I believe these can be reconciled if the theory and the practice of democracy can be overcome. 
I find it ironic now that the thing that ostracized me as a youth, my Amer uh, Japanese heritage, was what America called on in its time of need. I enrolled in the MIS, uh, Military Intelligence Services, uh, language school. In my time in Japan, I was a quick student, and I soon found myself in the South Pacific. In the MIS, our job was to translate documents, uh, interrogate prisoners, intercept radio communications. It was a demanding and a dangerous job. You've got to remember, we look just like the enemy. We each assigned a big, tall American bodyguard to come with us so our units could tell us from them. My lieutenant, uh, Howard Moss, he, uh, he got radioed that there was a prisoner in an adjacent valley that needed uh, interrogating. And so I volunteered to go, my bodyguard and I, we crossed the valley. I interrogated the prisoner. And with that newly acquired information, we had to recross. Began crawling at first, and then in my haste, I began running from tall grass to tall grass, and I outstripped my bodyguard. That's when I heard the shot. There's been a large debate over the shot that would ultimately kill me. Was it a Japanese sniper, a small band of Japanese soldiers, or my own men mistaking me for the enemy with no bodyguard in sight? I know where the shot came from, but that's not what is important. What is important is that I crawled back to my commanding officer. What is important is that the information I was able to relay possibly saved the lives of hundreds of men. What's important is that I laid my life down in the hopes that my actions might somehow help my mother and brother still living in Japan. I became a true American that day when I died for the democracy in which I believed. History has taught us that an individual can change the map of the world, and I believe this to be true. My life and death may not have changed the world as a whole, but it did change Hood River, a valley that was wrought with uh, racial tension and disgrace, showed a sign of redemption when nearly four years after my death, its citizens, called for my body to be brought back here from the South Pacific. This valley raised me. It taught me to be an American. And even though we had a rocky path where it questioned my patriotism, it welcomed me home as one of its sons. <laughs>